In this video, we're going to talk about tuples or tuples, and also we are going to talk about tuples with only one element, nested tuples, indexing in tuples, and also a very important key characteristic of tuples, which is this, that tuples are immutable, and also we are going to talk about methods of tuples and a lot of other things. So please stay tuned. So let's talk about tuples or tuples. As far as I know, both pronunciations, I mean tuples and tuples are correct. Like lists, which we have covered in the previous video of this playlist, we have another data structure that we can store different things of different types in it, like a list, but now it is called tuple. And for defining that, for creating a tuple, we should use parentheses. So here, once again, for example, we can have different things of different types, for example, integer, floats, a Boolean number, for example, a complex number, and so on. So now if I print x, and also let's print type of x, and now if I run the code, you can see it's a tuple, and as you can see, we have a stored different things of different types in tuple. Now let's talk about a very common mistake that a lot of people make, and that common mistake is defining a tuple with only one value in it. For example, if we want to define a list with only one value in it, that's how we are going to do so, and if I print y, and also let's print type of y and now if i run a code you can see yes it's a list and it has only one value in it but if we want to define a tuple with only one value in it if we type something like this it is not correct and if i run a code you can see that it says the type of y is a string and not tuple and now maybe you ask why why is this happening the reason is that the defining characteristic, the defining symbol, the defining sign of a tuple is not these parentheses. Actually, the defining characteristic, the defining symbol, the defining sign of a tuple is these commas. So if you want to define a tuple with only one value in it, you should put a comma. And after that, now if I run a code, you can see type of y is tuple. And as you can see, we have a tuple, or let's say tuple, with one value. As I've told you before, as far as I know, both pronunciations, I mean tuple and tuple, are correct. And also you should keep in mind that even if you delete these parentheses, but keep this comma, if I run the code, you can see the type of y is tuple. And as you can see, we have a tuple with one value in it. So remember that the key symbol, the key sign of a tuple is these commas. But now let's talk about nested tuples. What do I mean by nested tuples? I mean, we can define tuples inside tuples. So here's a tuple, and inside this tuple, we can define another tuple. So here's our tuple, and these are its values. So as you can see, we have defined a tuple inside another tuple. This topic is called nested tuples. And now I'm definitely sure that you're asking this question. You're asking, oh, can we define another tuple inside this inner tuple or not? Yes, you can. For example, here, let's define another tuple inside this inner tuple. And these are its values. And also remember that we can continue. We can, for example, define another tuple inside this tuple and so on. Anyway, so you can define nested tuples. We have talked about indexing and slicing in previous videos of this playlist, but let's review that in this example. I mean, in this nested tuple. Suppose that we want to access this value. So in order to do so, first of all, we should simply type OK. First of all, we want to access uh, this tuple. And as you know, Python starts counting at zero. So this is the element at index zero in this tuple. This is the element at index one, index two, index three, and this is the element at index four. So we simply type x sub four. And now let's run the code. But before that, let's delete this line. So if I run a code, you can see so far we have access to this part, I mean this tuple. But now we should go further. And now we should access to this tuple. And after that, we should access to this value. But first of all, let's access to this inner 
two pole. And as you know, this is the element at index zero. This is the element at index one. And this is the this whole two pole is the element at index two. So this is index zero, index one, and index two. So from this, which is basically this whole tuple, we want to access to the element at index two, which is this inner tuple. So if I run a code, you can see so far we have access to this inner tuple, but now we want to access to this value. And we know that this is the value at index zero, and this is the value at index one. So here we can simply pass one as well. And if I run a code, you can see we have successfully access to this value. But now let's talk about a very important note and a key characteristic of tuples. And that characteristic is that tuples are not changeable. You cannot change them. For example, suppose that we want to change this value. So you may simply type something like this x sub zero. I mean, you want to access this value. And after that, maybe you want to change that value to, for example, A. So instead of one, you want to have A. So maybe you say, okay, I can type something like this, but actually you can't. Why? Because tuple is not is a data structure which is not changeable you cannot change it and here if i print x and if i run the code you can see it raises an error because tuples are not changeable and there's a fancy word for that it is called immutable immutable means not changeable so tuples are immutable I mean, not changeable. So you should remember that two poles are not changeable. And this is a key difference between two poles and lists. So now let's talk about something called methods for two poles. And because two poles are immutable, I mean, not changeable, we don't have that many methods as we did in lists. So we have fewer methods for tuples. Anyway, so let's start. First of all, let's suppose that we want to count how many A's do we have in X. So for doing so, we can simply type something like this. We can simply type X dot count because we want to count the number of A's. And after that, we are going to print the result. And if I run a code, you can see it says we have three A's inside this tuple. But now let's talk about another method, which is called index, which is used in order to get the index of a value. What do I mean? For example, we can simply type x dot index. And this method is used to get the index of a value. For example, if I pass this value, I'm in Python. So it is going to give us the index of python so here if i print the result of it and if i run a code you can see it says four because this is the value at index zero this is the value at index one index two index three and index four which you can see here and i'm definitely sure that a lot of people are asking about these a's and they may ask okay if we pass a then in that case, what is going to happen? Because we have different A's. And the answer is it is going to return only the first value, which is going to encounter. So in this case, it is this one. So it is going to return five, which is the index of the first one. So if I run a code, you can see it gives us five. It returns five. This was one of the videos of a step-by-step -step tutorial playlist of Python. You can find a link to that playlist in the description below. And also we have other playlists for other topics, which you can find them on the channel page.